the biggest influence was the seven years that I had with with Carlo. Uh, you know, it was strange the way it started off. I was working as the reserve team coach at, at Chelsea. I'd stepped up rapidly through the ranks during a four four year period at Chelsea, under 16 coach, under 18 reserve team coach, and all of a sudden a new manager came in, Carlo, and you know I was kind of presented to him as a as a possibility to be another assistant alongside uh, Ray Wilkins and Carlo you know asked me to do the job just for a couple of weeks to start because you know he didn't know me and I didn't know him and we needed to see how it, how it went and I went on an American tour with the first team um, and you know it was it was it was difficult it was my first sort of taste at stepping up at that level I wasn't sure if I was I wanted to do this I was thinking about maybe going back to the reserves and Carlo said to me no I want you to stay with me and you know, he persuaded me to do it and it was you know, the best thing I ever did because you know, two years at Chelsea, uh, winning the double 2009-2010 and then after that the journey we went on through the, the different European clubs in Paris and Spain with Madrid and then after I took the, the reins at Derby briefly then went back and went to Bayern Munich as well. It's just a fantastic period of my life professionally and personally as well. We're good friends, he's influenced me on so many different levels, um, you know, sort of especially in, in terms of football and, and, and tactics and the way to deal with people and it was really only since I stopped working with him that I realised how much I, I learned you know, from him. I mean in the late 80s you know, I, I would have been watching the great Milan team lifting the European Cup with Carlo as a player with Ruud Hullet and Van Basten and Rijkaard, uh, Baresi in that team. You know, watched him as a manager with a fantastic Juventus team, um, with Zidane and Baggio. So if someone had said at that point, the player Carlo Ancelotti, the manager of Carlo Ancelotti, you will end up being his assistant for seven years, going around some of the biggest clubs in Europe, you'd go, come on, you you kidding me? You know, I'm just, you know, I was just doing my A levels and a, a university. You think that's not, that's not going to happen? But it's incredible what life can throw at you. In terms of other sports and interest in other sports, I mean, I, I really like I really like American sport. Um, so the NBA, uh, even NCAA and college basketball, but also the NFL. And alongside like enjoying watching it, I'm actually very interested in the, in the coaching of it. And I've been fortunate enough in, in my time, going back quite a few years now, that I've done a number of study trips over to the United States and looked at the way that they approach their, their sport, their professionalism, the leadership, the coaching, all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And I think that I've used quite a lot of that stuff in my own style and the way we support the team. Um, I'm an avid reader of you know, coaching and leadership books both within sport and in, in business as well. All things that I enjoy doing and also really help me in my own job. The, be the best players are never satisfied with where they're at and that's why they spend the extra time in the gym, the extra time on the training field that when they have been successful in a game it's okay that was alright but move on to the next thing when they win a trophy it's like we've got to go and do that again a lot of people don't have that drive to be able to turn that out day in and day out over you know, weeks months and years um, and that's a that's a strong quality to have as a player yeah, I mean if I mention a, a player who was you know in my opinion and I think in a lot of people's opinions the best player of the of the World Cup and that's Luka Modric. You know, I worked with him for two years at uh, Real Madrid, he's someone that I'm still in contact with. Fantastic person, hard working, humble, um, super talent. So many like him. Tony Cruz would be another example. A German you know, World Cup winning player, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. And then you could list, you know, there's, there's so many other players. Other players had other, 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 other strengths as well as their, you know, their personality, their leadership, 
Out, out of all the uh, out of all the clubs and all the really high level players, world class players, I would say that you know, Cristiano and Zlatan were the two standout players for their talent, um, their leadership, their desire, their physicality, their mental toughness. And I suppose even out of those two, Cristiano would be a level above that because of you know, Zlatan's won a lot, but you know, Cristiano, the Ballon d'Or wins, the individual achievements, in addition to you know, European champion with Portugal, European champion five times, four with Real Madrid, one with Manchester United. Um, incredible record goal scoring, um, phenomenal player. One of the best uh, you know, we've ever seen. One of the things I noticed about all the all of the top players is that they they're good people. Um, they're good communicators. They listen. They don't think they know it all. They've got a thirst for hunger and improvement. And you know that's something that I really share with the players that I work with now. Is that you know, the importance of being humble, having uh, you know good integrity. Um, very important characteristics for me. If you if you want to achieve your potential.